Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Wealth Architect Podcast. So glad you're here. Today, we have a, um, a special guest. We have we just found out before the call started that we have a lot in common. And I think you're going to find out this guy's really cool to listen to and talk with. And he's got some really cool ideas about uh, about wealth management. And basically, I think common sense, right? A lot of the things that we have in this world uh, are lacking in common sense these days. And I think he brings a nice grounding and centering to us. It's Mark Yegi here, wealth architect and lifestyle investor. Let's take your life to the next level. Welcome to the Wealth Architect Podcast. He's the president and retirement planner at Cortez Wealth Management. He's an inventor of solutions, ideas, and plans with a mission to make the financial world safer, more transparent, and more accessible for everyone. He's basically an experienced financial advisor that's going to specialize in helping clients prepare for retirement with he's got a conservative angle to him and an America first approach, which I think is just great. Please help me welcome Carlos Cortez. Carlos, welcome. How are you? Hey, Mark. Thanks for having me. I'm excited uh, about this podcast. So I'm glad you're here. Tell us a little bit about where you are, what where you come from, and, and how you've evolved into this position where you help other people take control of their financial lives in a conservative way. Yeah, yeah. So um, recently, well, not recently, um, I, uh, I was, my, my father is a pastor, a uh, Spanish pastor, Spanish speaking pastor. And I, I grew up in a church, but I also didn't want to be poor. Like my dad, he also served in military, in North Carolina. Um, God, we love our Delta forces and our 82nd airborne. Those are some bad dudes. Uh, yeah. My dad was a part of that program. Um, so I got conservatism from the church as well as from the military. And, and I was just bleeding red, white, and blue everywhere I went. It was a part of me. Uh, but I also had an inclination on how money worked just as a kid, um, playing, I played soccer, went and played in college. I was pretty decent and I always got made fun of because I was, uh, I was saying, Hey, one day our knees are going to break. We're, we're all not going to go pro. And I want to study money since we're all trying to play for money. I actually just want to study it. And so yeah. what I did is, um, Based on my conservative values, I went to Wall Street and I, I just didn't like the greed. Uh, I was 22, 23 years old as a stockbroker. I just didn't like the greed, the, the Luciferian ways, the, the commission breath, just the like literally, Mark, people were worshiping themselves. I mean, sure. it's just it's just disgusting. Um, and so unfortunately, I found as a corporate financial advisor that it really isn't about the client anymore. And so I'm coming out with a documentary exposing all this. Um, and, but long, long story short, I, uh, you know, someone said, I don't know if I read this recently <clears throat> or if someone said it to me, but um, a, a very powerful statement was made. Like your life will, there's two important days in your life. The first one is when you were born. And the second reason is, or the second important day is when you found out you were born. So, um, being, being grown up in the military and a very strong Christian based home. And then I was a stockbroker. It was like an oxymoron. <laughs> so sure. I, I just, I just became bold, you know, the LGBT movement. I mean, the transgender movement, uh, the woke capital, the woke garbage that's out right now. They're so bold about what they believe in. Why can't us believers that have the truth be bold about what we believe in? And more importantly, we have to start putting our money where our mouth is as America. And unfortunately, all of all of financial advisors are in this like in this banking system where they control what we can say, Mark. It's bad. Yeah. Like we're licensed. Like we can't dress a certain way. We're not allowed to have a political opinion. Right. We're not allowed to say certain things because we don't want to offend our broker dealer. We don't want to offend a corporate. So what if I created my own financial firm? I could say whatever I want, as long as it's the truth. And that that's how I started my own firm. Um, honestly, Mark, like I've been doing this for 16 years and the first 12 years were, were hell. Um, I just told banks that I don't like you and my, and I'm not going to stand for what you believe in. And you can mark my license, do whatever. How many speeding tickets do you have? I mean, you still got a license, <laughs> yeah. right? So I, uh, I, I just fought the big banks and their, their, their ways. And it is to a point mark where we no longer want 
to invest in things that go against our beliefs. God will never question how much money you've made. He'll question the character it took to make that money. Yeah. And there's such a dichotomy today. It, it's like you, if you have one belief, you can't have another one. You can't even entertain or listen to another one. Yes. And we've lost some of the values that we had as a country where we would debate ideas. And I don't know if we'd sway the other side into believing them, but at least they'd understand our position. Now yeah. you're wrong and you're, you're labeled a racist or a terrorist or a misogynist or a, a hater somehow, just because you have a different belief. And, yes. you know, while other people may not, you know, agree in the America first to the MAGA movement or, uh, you know, the Christian right, or even the, even the people on the left, you know, at least let's give everybody a voice and don't censor them just because you don't agree. What is going on where we have, we have changed things. And, and I'd like to hear a little bit more about how you did fight those banks, because, you know, I grew up through the Wall Street, uh, through the Wall Street deal. And I saw the same thing, you know, right out of college, I saw they were offering people, you know, straight commission jobs to slam people into stocks, and um, whether it was the right thing for them or not. And I saw all the other things, you know, on Wall Street as I developed a financial technology firm. So I would love to hear how you were able to fight back. Uh, so um, I started reading scripture um, as a Christian based entrepreneur. Um, and, and honestly, I lost a client. Um, I was just a kid. I was only like 24 years old. This client had half a million bucks. It was a big account for me at the time and a big ordeal. Sure. And I was a stockbroker with a Jersey based uh, Wall Street firm at the time. And he said, uh, this particular client said, Hey, Carlos, uh, I appreciate everything you've done. You've made some money, you've lost some money, but you've owned up to it. But I am going to take my account and go with my financial advisor. And I said, what? I thought I was your financial advisor. He goes, no, you're my stockbroker. And that hit me wow. like a sack of bricks. Sure. And, and then I started becoming more open and construct construct. I'm an athlete. So we're always getting chewed at and constructive criticism was a big thing. Yeah. Uh, so I took that in personally and just made it my motivation on what financial holistic financial advising is. And I created a whole process. Um, like I said, one of, one of those things of finding your identity, right. Um, is why did God, God, why did you create me? Well, I feel like he created me to create a process to give to our God fearing patriots so they don't have to worry about the big banking system. So um, as I found out this like this safe money loophole for clients, um, I would question my current broker dealer at the time. Hey, what do you think about this product? Or I was really excited. Like and and they were like, oh, no, we can't do those type of investments. Actually, they're terrible for the clients. And they're, they're just not good. And I said, well, I just lost a half million dollar client to one. Like, why can't we do the right thing and offer it? And they had no interest mark because they told me we don't make money offering those. Well, yeah. Yeah. And, and then if you peel the onion more, uh, you really see like these big banks, they have shareholders. Their interest is to make profit for their shareholders. The client actually comes like last place. You know, the Merrill Lynch, the Morgan Stanley's of the world, all these public traded companies that are in financial consulting, um, even Wells Fargo advisors, uh, they they literally have to make a profit for the shareholders. And and 97% of the revenues come from the commissions and comes from the fees that the advisor charged so that the the banks can have a a profitable shareholder meeting. And, <laughs> it's amazing. And, yeah. And, and so a lot of times, like you said, right out of college, they love getting the kids out of college because they don't know this stuff. And I was one of them. I was one of them. I'm, I'm 39 years old. I've been I started in the industry when I was 23. So I'm a senior citizen in the <laughs> industry. Um, I, I turned 40 next month. I still got salt inside of my hairs. And 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 that's just it. The big banks are losing so much to the financial independent fiduciaries. They're creating now they're creating their own independent channel with the big banks. And it's still the same. Like Joe Biden says, malarkey It's still the same junk. You're just getting paid higher, but you're you're still constringent to the golden handcuffs. Yeah. And you still got to promote the company agenda. And so uh, when we interview it, when we interview clients, we ask we tell them, hey, um, ask your ask your advisor, what is your standard deviation? Um, did did you close down during June Juneteenth? 
before the federal holiday, did you force mandate your, um, your employees? Like, we don't believe in any of that. And um, if, if they don't even know those things, who's trading my account? What's my standard deviation? Mark, I don't know what's worse. If it's them not knowing what those things are or them not wanting to know and they're controlling your money. Yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, this is how I fought the big banks and just God kind of provided a way with multiple clients following me. I created my own registered investment advisor here in Florida and we're the number one growing uh, registered investment advisor in Florida. Um, we're proud to say that. And, and, and it's just because we just want independence for our clients. We want, we want the ability for them to control and honestly not fund this nasty Luciferian agenda that's out right now. Hey, it's Mark Yeager here to tell you about our cash flow machine trading program that's designed to teach you how to make safe, reliable income. Now we shoot for two to 4% a month of income and growth in your portfolio. And we have courses to teach you how to do this yourself or inside a mastermind community. And the best part of that is it only takes about 20 minutes a week to implement. Now, while two to 4% a month doesn't sound like much, I show you exactly how we took my IRA from $111,000 to over 500,000 in just 19 months without huge risk. I'm not telling you this to brag, just to show you that you can do this too. So to learn more about this program, go to cashflowmachine.io. That's cashflowmachine.io and you can learn more. Yeah. Well, it's, a, it's just amazing. Well, glad you're glad you're taking the arrows and leading the way because people like you have to lead because there's so few leaders these days, it seems like. Uh -huh. um, so let's talk. Of, let's make a transition. Let's talk. This is the Wealth Architect podcast. So let's yeah. talk about how we can generate wealth for people. You have a process that you take people through, I think, for retirement. So why don't you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, so I created um, I, I created the America First Retirement Planning Process. And in that process, there are different strategies. Um, you can go to AmericaFirstRetirementPlan.com and download a free guide if, they, if you'd like to learn more about it, if you can't get the information from here. But number one, we're just going to keep your money safe. Number two, we're going to get you a reasonable rate of return. And number three, we want to be simple and transparent, something our industry has been terrible at. And number four, we don't want to invest in China or any other communist countries or ESGs. And number five, we feel that you need to work with a fiduciary that has that believes in what you believe in, like God, country, and family. Uh, so within that framework, we have founded uh, the ABC process. And it's really simple. It's really kindergarten level. Um, wealth architect sounds intimidating because I'm sure you're extremely smart. Uh, but as you know, as you know, Mark, um, it, it, it's complicated. It can be very, very complicated. So what we've done is... Uh, at a kindergarten level, when the way you learn, uh, when you learn the ABCs and one, two, three, as a child, they color code those blocks. Sure. And, and so our mind is easier. It is basically like a sponge. Like we associate things with colors. That's why Excel has used color coding columns. Um, and even in school, everything's color coded. Um, and McDonald's, when someone doesn't speak English, they color code things for certain things. Uh, so it's a universal language. And so what we've done, we color code a process. So just real quick, um, if I have a few minutes, red money sure. is unlimited gains and losses. Uh, the characteristics of red money is unlimited gains and losses. Um, unknown fees. What does that sound like? It sounds like the stock market. It sounds like bonds. It sounds like, um, sounds like crypto. It sounds like this stuff right here, gold. Um, it sounds, sounds like, like cash. Uh, yeah, sounds like cash. <laughs> Any, uh, anything that goes up and down is considered red money. That's that. Okay. So uh, we don't know the fees. It has unlimited losses, unlimited gains. Real estate, your home is red money. Now, green money is something backed by an insurance contract. So we like insurance contracts on your money because they have guarantees. We have these $1,500 cell phones. We have... Um, insurance on our house, our cars, our home, our health, our life, our dog. If you're a criminal, you can get prepaid legal insurance. Um, we, have, we have insurance on everything. So safe money or green money is going to be an insurance account that guarantees your principal. And what I mean by guarantee your principal, 
you are getting out of the banking system because the FDIC is shambles. They only have one or 2% of your money in reserves Yep. through the Dodd-Frank Act of 2010. There's no more bailout. So if there's a financial crisis in another 08, which <laughs> they keep on printing money, <laughs> it eventually is going to happen because Coming. you can only tax so much, right, from the yep. retirement accounts. So if you believe that there's a 2008 that will happen again, you do not need to have your money in the banks. You need to have your money in an insurance contract because insurance contracts uh, back your money up with cash reserves with other insurance carriers. That doesn't mean you're locking up your money forever. That, me that doesn't mean you can't grow your money. There's contracts right now that make anywhere from 7 to 15% annually that can double your money within five to seven years. Uh, you guys heard of ETFs. Imagine having a... Uh, like an ETF with no losses, you know, so that is safe money. And then yellow money is, is what you come, you and I come from. It's, it's basically like a, is a tactically manage, you know, Warren Buffett, Hey, God bless him. But that stuff doesn't work anymore. You can't just buy and hold when you have artificial intelligence running the whole gamut. I mean, the markets are completely manipulated. Warren Buffett, I got a lot of respect for him, but there's no more buy and hold anymore. That's like dinosaur stuff. Like the banks have artificial intelligence. They know where you're going before it even happens. So we use that same technology for our God-fearing patriots. We believe in a stock market. You better if you're American because you want the stock market eventually to come back up. At the end of the day, we all are Americans. We want the best for the captain of our ship, whether we like him or not, but we want our economy to thrive. And so... Uh, artificial intelligence, manning with day traders, manning with CFAs, a whole room full of a, a, a stock SWOT analysis group that can look at your money 24-7. That is considered yellow money. And right now, um, as of this week in March 8th, um, all of our money managers are in treasury bills right now. We don't feel like the market's safe. And look what happened yesterday when Jer Jerome Powell is trying to basically say what inflation should be. Who is he to say what inflation should be? He and created he said, it, and then he's creating the problem by damaging the economy. Like what kind of a, that's like the doctor coming and saying, oh, you had a heart attack. Let's rip out your heart and uh, see if maybe that helps. It just doesn't make any sense. It's so stupid, my man. It it's really so is. stupid. It really is. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And when you, when you look so... back, like you can't make some of the stuff up that we've seen in the last five years. It's like, it's like the aliens are looking down on us going, what are they doing down there? Like, are they, are they, are they joking? <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, yeah. And, and, and so uh, just so you know, with, with um, inflation, when it comes to social security, I think you said in your last podcast, Mark, they take out petroleum and food yeah. when they, when they get the CPI, uh, when they come out with the CPI, when, especially when it comes to social security, haven't you realized that social security never keeps up with inflation because they use the CPI minus petroleum and food. And there you have it. That's inflation. Yeah. According to these knuckleheads on Washington and, and housing as well. Like, uh, you know, yep. they replaced the house. So they replaced steak with hamburger thinking, yeah. well, it's beef. So, you know, you don't need a steak. You don't need a filet mignon. You can have ground beef. You know, oh, you're fine. It's terrible. And it's, it's all manipulated. It's all a game. And so if you're in that matrix, um, then you have to play in that matrix and you're yep. subject to the whims and caprices of that matrix. If you decide to educate yourself, which is what this podcast is all about, and it sounds like what you're all about, educate yourself and learn. You don't have to learn everything, but learn a few right. basics so that you can take control of your wealth Yes, and, um, and learn how to handle it yourself rather than giving it to some crazy bank that has their own agenda, like you just mentioned. That's great. Oh, yeah. And so like the yellow, red, and green, if I go back to that, uh, yellow is going to be 100% liquid. Uh, this is where I, I make 1% uh, as a consultant. I manage these money managers trading your account. Um, but now, Mark, they got it now where if the market falls off 30% and there's another crisis, our money managers get out at a seatbelt number. Think of a seatbelt. You never want to use it, but it's there like a concealed weapon. Um, there's a negative 10 seatbelt a negative 13 seatbelt, a negative seven seatbelt. So with all the financial technology that's out there, if the market should go down and the portfolio experience a massive drawdown, they're going to go to cash or treasury bills immediately at that drawdown number. So we're able to provide a peace of mind to clients in the market 
uh, and still have a seatbelt. So a combination of that, that green money and yellow money and really walking away from red money is what we ask our clients. Like, why do you want to be in red money? Like yeah. when every, everybody, everybody that comes on board, we ask them, Hey, uh, how much red money do you have? How much yellow money do you want? How much green money do you want? And honestly, it gives them the ability to navigate the recessions that we have because you're, you're de-risking your portfolio, but you have a pot of money that can grow. And so the cool part is about yellow money. We're using that for income, not touching our green money bucket. Our green money bucket is averaging a double within five to seven years. So as you're spending your yellow money in income, your green money is doubling every five to seven years. And it's, it's like a replenishing ladder every few yep. years. And so uh, we're, able to, we're able to protect their principal from a, a falling uh, dollar. Uh, that's the other thing they're probably going to do is try to crash a dollar some. Um, we're able to protect themselves from a market uh, shift or market recession. And we're, we're simply able to give them lifetime income with principal protection, tax efficiency. So it's a very, very complicated world. We try to make it simple with the color system. Well, let's, let's, as we go into our final minutes here, let's talk a little bit about taxes because you alluded to the fact that, uh, you know, we're probably going to have to raise taxes to pay for all this waste that we've been, uh, when we've been doing as a government, as a culture, as a society, as a world. And uh, that money has to come from somewhere. And of course, they're going to try to come after the people that have it. And um, so how do, how do we prevent that calamity from happening to us? Well, um, IRAs and 401ks, they, I mean, the first and foremost, we have to understand that we don't really own them. Right. 401ks and IRAs are controlled by the government. Um, and when you hit the, the problem is we have $40 trillion in, in retirement accounts as America, um, which by the way, 12 trillion of that Joe Biden wanted to put an ESG that got smacked down by the Senate and he's saying he's going to veto it. So yep. hopefully he's out of office before he tries to veto it. Um, but to the taxes, they have to increase taxes. They have to increase taxes to pay for all the spending. And they, they won't say, hey, we're going to rise taxes. They're not going to come out and say that, even though they have. They're sneaky. So what they're going to do is they're going to cut off, and they've already done this through multiple acts, like the SECURE Act 1.0, the SECURE Act 2.0. It's a federally mandated, mandated act. And what they've done is, is when you're 72 years old, you were or 70 and a half years old with the secure act 1.0 you're supposed to take something called an rmd and if That's you right. don't take that rmd it is 50 percent penalty i did not stutter 50 percent penalty um now what they've done is they increased it to not just 72 but now they increased it again with the uh, secure act 2.0 to 73 and all that has done mark it's taken your rmd withdrawal rates from 3.65 to 4.1%. So if you got $100,000 in the IRA and you're 73 years old, now you have to take $4,100 out and pay taxes on that money at whatever ordinary income tax we're in. So they slowly increase taxes, but now what they're doing is they're slowly attacking retirement accounts. And so uh, they like the word penalties. And so the Bible says my people suffer from a lack of knowledge. Yeah. And so social security is the way they're going to pay for all this Corona bills that they pass. Um, they keep on, they keep on having um, increases in the penalization. So just so your listeners know, if they're retired, uh, if you do not take, if you take social security before the age of 60 or your full retirement age, 67 for many now, and let's just say you're 65, but your full retirement age is 67 and you have a half a million dollars in your IRA, you cannot make over $21,240 or you'll be penalized 50%. To money me, withdrawn it? from your 401k and IRA is considered ordinary income. Is That's your money. That's your stinking money. It's the biggest scam. <laughs> and, and so when you're full retirement age, now they've increased it to $56,520. If you go over $56,520, when you're full retirement age that year, they will penalize you not 50%, but 30%. For every $3 you make, you got to give one back Yeah, while amazing. you're on Social Security. So if, they, if anyone remembers anything from this podcast, be very cautious 
of your 401ks and IRAs when you're taking Social Security. That's really my message today. I even think they're going to come after the SEPs. Nobody's talking about it, but you've, you've already paid your taxes on the SEPs. They've appreciated. They're yeah. going to come after that and tax it if you make over a certain amount of money. They haven't talked about it yet, but I think it's a matter of time. Yeah, and, uh, we'll and, see. and Roth 401ks uh, there or Roth 401k, Roth IRAs, it doesn't matter. They're still written by the government. Yeah. And I really think the, the biggest the biggest sad part is they're eventually going to count the Roth IRA income tax free. But it's going to count towards calculation of Social Security of those numbers I just gave oh, you. Sure. They That's already did it with tax free bonds, by the way. Tax free bonds count towards a calculation of your Social Security, but they're tax free. Yeah, exactly. Well, we could we could go down this rabbit hole of uh, you know the the underdog against the big the, yep. the big stalwarts forever because I, I just think that's what's going on in our economy. Whether you study the health crisis we've had in the last few years, whether you study the money, whether you study education, whether you study our culture, it's all um, it's all become a big game, and it's not even hidden anymore. I think it's now it's it's out there, and you know this ESG movement. I'll kind of try to end on this, although I might go crazy on this you know this esg movement where they wanted you to in, invest in these environmental friendly companies these social companies esg stands for environmental social and governance and you put your money into these you know climate change companies that are supposed to benefit and they turn out to be losers right like you know it's when the wind doesn't blow and the sun doesn't shine you know renewable energy while it's great and i think we need an all of the above strategy when it when those things don't happen you don't get any results and so it's not a a financially profitable situation that's sustainable long term. And these companies are now finally, after years and years of mandates and BlackRock investing in all these things, they're starting to finally realize it. And now some that's why you're seeing a movement against ESG. Uh, it's just taken a lot of, a, a long time. But anyway, we could go we could go crazy yeah. on it. Sounds like that's part of your platform. Yeah, yeah, it is a part of our platform. And and you know, knucklehead Biden is basically trying to mandate ESGs and yeah. 401ks. So he he had, like I said, 12 trillion of all American 401ks. He wanted that allocated to ESG movements. And, and so BlackRock, BlackRock and Merrill and all these big banks, they want to adopt it because it's pro LGBT if it's their woke agenda. Yeah. And it is basically like just wokeism at a whole nother level. Um, and and so my argument, if I got to go to Capitol Hill and start a whole movement, I will. Uh, you know, whatever that God wants me to do, but we simply don't want to invest against our values. I just got an email this morning of the ESG email alert. And it basically said that they have the LGBT fund that's going to empower transsexuals, uh, transgenders, sorry, uh, to get into wall street. I'm like, if you really cared about somebody changing their sex, then mentor them. You don't have to force the whole public into doing something that you probably don't agree with. If yeah. you want to do good, then open up a church in Nicaragua, you know, give, give more to your church, like help the homeless, um, just help the serve the under underprivileged kids in your area. Uh, I mean, there's so many, so much good that we need to do. We don't need to do it with our force mandates and our money. They're trying to financially inoculate us. Yeah, that's, 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 that's a good way to end it is they're trying to financially inoculate us. Mm -hmm. um, and that word has seemed to be uh, thrown around quite a bit lately. So listen, uh, last, last chance for people to uh, go out and get your free guide. And I highly recommend they do this. Sounds like you got some really great thought behind it, that America first idea that you have for wealth planning. So tell them once again, where they go in case they're driving so they can just member, yeah. remember this and put it in their brain. Yeah, it's just simple. America first retirement plan. Dot com. We have webinars and never tax me strategy. We can teach you how to disinherit the IRS uh, legally uh, using safe money tactics, but America first retirement plan.com. You can download a free guide and you can even request a consultation. If you want, uh, we're more than happy to uh, speak to anyone that wants to listen to us. And, and that's pretty much it. Uh, you can also check out my podcast. If you want more and more information, uh, you can go to rumble.com and type in my name, Carlos Cortez. I am on the Stu Peters network as a financial, uh, the financial commentator, but just go to rumble.com and type in my name, Carlos Cortez, and you will see all of our content there. Wow. And well, thank you very much. I, I really enjoyed uh, speaking with you. It's so refreshing to hear uh, an alternate voice. That's not afraid of being censored and and push down and at least you're out there 
trying to do the work that you believe in and around your values. And if, if more people, if we would all do that, the world would be a better place. So <laughs> I, I want to thank you for your time and your wisdom, Carlos. Uh, and thanks for being here. Appreciate it. Mark, I would love to have you on my show as well. So Great. Thank love you. to be there. So uh, everybody else who's listening or watching, I want to thank you for your time and your attention. And once again, remember, never give up your power in your health, your wealth, or your time. See you next time on the Wealth Architect Podcast. Take care, everybody. You've been listening to the Wealth Architect Podcast with Mark Yegi. Follow us on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Like and subscribe on YouTube. Share and tell your friends. See you soon.